Greetings hobbyists, this is our Sons of Vool, and in this tutorial we're going to have a look at some tips and tricks for selecting faces and edges quickly in Blender. And trust me, however good you are at Blender, I'm pretty sure you're going to see something new that you don't know here. Now as I say, I'm pretty sure that this is going to be a tutorial that's got something for everyone, but I am going to start at the most basic level. So I'm going to go straight into face mode, and I imagine most people just through trial and error, even if you're a beginner, knows that to click on a face you select it, and if you hold down shift, you can select multiple faces all in one go. If I just select off, if you press down alt while you select a face, and you select close to an edge, you will select all the loops towards that edge, and I could for example do that if I select off for a different edge to do it in a different direction. And of course you can combine the two together to hold Alt and Shift and do the same. Also, if you select on a face, you can hold Control and when you click on another face, it will select the shortest path between the two, ignoring diagonals. And if I go into edge mode or vertex mode, we can do exactly the same thing. So Control and again, if I go there, I can press Alt and it will select all of the ones in that edge loop. Now, as well as that, we have a few selection modes most people start off with the select box. The selection modes are up here where we can just drag and select however many things we want. I'm just going to go back into face mode. If you're not familiar with this pie menu, it's because I've got a free add-on called Machine Tools. I strongly recommend you get it. It's going to be very useful for a trick I'm going to show you later. Otherwise, you can just select your choices up here in terms of what you want to view or use one, two or three for vertex mode, edge mode and face mode respectively. Now, as well as that, we do have other methods that we can use to select. I can hold down here to choose to go to different ones. You can also cycle through them by pressing the W key. For example, circle select allows you to just drag and the W button gives you the lasso tool, which effectively you just draw a shape and that's going to select it. Now, I'm just going to go back into box select and just mention that if you do press C, you will get something that looks like the circle select, but you'll notice it is different. It's got a dotted outline if I press escape to get out to it, whereas the normal circle select has a solid outline. Just going back to box select. So the C version of circle select does much the same thing, except for now, if you hold down your middle mouse button, you can unselect as well. So that's really useful for going through and selecting things quickly. For example, if I wanted to select all of the points on this face, I could do and then maybe unselect those two in the middle. The other selection tool that's quite useful and you need to have a number pad to do this. So if you're using a laptop, go buy an extra keyboard is if you press control and plus, it adds one to the amount of things that you've got selected, for example, faces, and you can carry that around corners, or if you press control and minus, it will do one less. So I imagine that's the basic ones out of the way. Now, there are a few tricks with the plus tool that you can use. For example, say you wanted to select some faces and I'm going to press shift and select one missing out. So for example, there, then all you can do is just press and hold down shift and control and press plus and box cutter will recognize the pattern and it keeps missing one out. And you can do the same thing, for example, with two missing, shift and control, and it will miss two. And what's really nice about this is it doesn't just have to work in faces. You can do this with edges as well. So for example, there and there, and we'll miss one out every time. Now, the reason I find this really useful is because if I just go into this object here that hasn't been subdivided, if I select this edge, control and B, to bevel it and I'm going to put the segments up to something like 16 and I really always recommend that you do your segments in multiples of two in fact I generally go a little bit further than that but I'll talk about that in a second what that means is that if you've got something like this and you realize that the curve is a bit more extreme than you want or a bit rounder than you want or it's just too high polygon especially if you've got lots of other things going on it means that I can select that face that face quickly do the other ones and control X to dissolve those out. And then again, I can, if I really wanted to do the same thing. And you'll notice that the reason I go for things that multiples of two is that that always leaves you with the outer bound of your bevel being the same. So you don't have a problem. And we can even go a bit further than that in the way that we choose to do things. For example, if I bring in, let's say a cylinder with shift and A, 
If you've watched any of my tutorials, you might have wondered, and I have had a few questions about this. For 3D printing, obviously we want things to be quite round. For CG work, you can just use Shade Smooth or something like that. But when you're printing it, you need it to be nice and rounded with lots of vertices. And some people have asked me, why do I go to weird numbers? Like I always do 128 or 256 or something like that. Now I recommend these numbers. I always go up from four. So doubling each time, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256. The reason being that, say, for example, if I just G and Z to move that up and come and have a look at the edges, if I do have a lot going on and I decide this 256 is way more than I need, maybe I'm shrinking it down and it's just going to be a bit excessive, I can select every other one and potentially if I just hold down plus all the way, there we go, and then dissolve those out. And because I've always doubled every time, I can do that again and again and again by pressing Ctrl and X to dissolve. Now I'm down to the next amount down, so I'm now down to 128. And if I want to go to 64, I can do the same and I can keep doing it again. Now, that Ctrl Shift Plus technique works quite well when you've got maybe a single bevel. I would say for something like this, it takes more time than you want. These tricks are all meant to be solving you time. But an alternative to that, if you're going to do something on this large scale, and to be fair, you could do this on the bevel as well, is that if I go to Edge and Shift and Z to get into X-ray mode, I can select all of those edges. I'm just going to come out of that. And there is another option. If you go to Select and check a deselect, you can have it automatically that it selects one and then deselects another one. You can also put that up. So for example, it could be selected two and then deselected two. So you can do whatever you want with that. Do note that it does cause problems. For example, here where it's gone round all the way, it hasn't worked out perfectly there. Now you can do an offset to try and make this work, but there'll always be a problem here. But that's because I've got this set to more. If I go to one and one, then we will always get half the amount and I can dissolve that out. We're now down to 64. Check a deselect and should come back out. We're now down to 32 and so on. And I can go all the way down to well, four realistically to get a cube. Now there is one problem with this checker deselect and it's this. If I go to edge mode and I've got an edge loop in here for some reason or I've subdivided this in some way and then I try this trick now, you'd think this would work. So for example, if I go into edge mode and here and here and then go to select and checker deselect, it doesn't work. It's deselected one thing. It doesn't work because this has been split up. So that's a problem. And what if I want to do the same dissolve trick again? Well, actually there is a way to do this, but for this you have to have machine tools, which is the one that's bringing up the cool pie menu that allows me to flip between things really quickly, like edge mode, vertex mode, face mode, object mode. It's really useful. It does save a lot of time and it's free, just get it. But what's great about this in terms of selection is if I go to vertex mode, and I press Alt from what we've done earlier and select this whole edge loop. I can check a deselect this still. So check a deselect and now I've got every other one done. And if I press tab and hold my mouse over the edge, you'll see it's got a control and click, which doesn't just change this to edge mode. It keeps this selection and expands upon it. So if I click that, now I've effectively check a deselected all of the edges because they're the ones that are attached to the vertices. And admittedly, I do have this one down the middle but all I'm going to do is shift and alt, select it to deselect the edge loop, and then I can control and X again. And again, I've done the same trick and I'm now down to 16. So you can get around this edge loop problem if you need to. So check and deselect is a really nice quick way of doing things. Now while we're on the topic of cubes and especially something like this, where we've got this subdivided cube, say we want to do something with this face. Sorry, by that I don't mean the individual faces, I mean the whole edge of this square. Now, this hasn't been this subdivided, but let's say we had something that was subdivided a lot. For example, we might want to do something where we can select that really quickly. And while, yes, I could select those two and control and plus, or I could go into side view, go into x-ray view, select there, come back out of x-ray view, and I've got that selected. There are some other options that are actually much quicker. So for example, if I just select one of them and press Shift and G, we get this wonderful menu, the Select Similar. I will say this is also here, but 
Shift and G is a bit quicker. And we can select a lot of things here. And this is gonna select things that are similar to this face. Now, there are other things that you can do with this, but for example, if I press this and go to select area, well, it's been perfectly subdivided. They're all the same area. That's not any use to me. But what one is very useful is if I do that and go for the similar normal direction, Oh, it's selected that whole side now and I can just G and move that out if I need to, for example. Now what's really useful about this, if I just go into vertex mode and let's say select those two vertex and say I've got some unflat shape. So for example, I'm gonna G and X. I'm just using proportional editing here and what that allows me to do is G to move out and I can put my mouse wheel up and down to make that more or less extreme. So let's uh, pull this out here. Now we've got this nice curved shape, but theoretically that now doesn't work. The normals aren't in exactly the same direction, but usefully, Shift and G, normals. We have this threshold here, and that allows me to move that up and down. For example, I can move it up to there, and I've still selected all of that. So this gives us lots of options there of selecting. So I imagine that's gonna be something that we find useful. Now the final one of these tricks is going to use a bit more of a complex object. So let's say an armoured shoulder pad from everyone's favourite sci-fi superhuman warriors. Now this has been relatively quick to make, but if I go into face mode, this has got some problems to it. At least if I want to edit it, like if I want to do something to this face, what I mean by that is this internal bit of the armour section. Like, okay, yeah, I can press C and start selecting all of this and it's going to take a while and then I'm going to have to come in here and press C again and carefully get that like everything's annoying about this it's an absolute pain and say for example I decided which in this instance would be true that this isn't thick enough let's say I 3d print this and that just doesn't show up very well I need a greater inset I come back here and I can start well if I press alt I can select most of that well, let's say most of that and then most of that but then there's these little problems here and it's just taking a lot more time than I want it to well well there's a really nice selection trick for this which saves so much time I mean if I knew about this a couple of years ago when I was doing something with these sort of shapes it would have saved me hours uh, probably in total if I go into edge mode and click off so nothing is selected at the moment that's quite important and go to select and then go to select sharp edges you'll notice this is quite effectively selected all of the sharp edges that I've got here. Now, if you've got something that's not as extreme as this, there is a sharpness bit here, which you can sort of play around with and it'll change the angle that's being selected. But for this, it's worked fine. You notice even these little bits here, it's picked up. Now what I'm gonna do here is either go up to the top here for these edge options, or I can just press Control and E, and that's gonna bring up the edge options wherever I am. And I'm going to mark seams. Now, that has highlighted all of these edges now if I click off. So each of these is now being marked with a seam. Now for a person that's doing 3D printing, no CG, you probably don't know what a seam is or you might not even care or maybe you do, but either way I'm gonna go through it. A seam is something there for when you're unwrapping the UVs of this object and you use UVs if you want to do things like texturing that's entirely just part of the skin that's over the top of it. It's normally used for things like animation or game asset creation, things like that. Anything related to CG design. Now the reason that I've picked that for this is one, the tool works off it, but also because it's not gonna have any relevance to what we're doing if you're just doing it for 3D design. You can, if you don't want to see it, just come to the viewport overlays and just down here, you can make it so you can't see the seams. So it's not gonna ruin your sort of visual look of this when you're going into edit mode. But if I bring those back just to demonstrate the point, what these seams do is if you just hold your mouse over a section of faces that you want to select that are all linked together and are confined by a series of seams and you press L, it magically selects everything inside the seam. It's so good. It's gonna save so much time. Now, obviously there are different ways to do this. For example, you can do this with just sharp edges, which we probably use quite a lot. So you might already have a selection of sharp edges that you want to select inside. So if you did, you'd just click on sharp. Now, obviously I don't have any sharp edges, so it's not worked. So I'm gonna go back to seams, but you have got that. You can also do it by material and other things like that. But let's say this is my example here. Oh, and do note that if I, haven't deselected it and press L somewhere else, it adds it to the selection. So now we've selected all of that, but not the inside ones. So I'm just gonna select off over here. And let's say my original problem was 
I didn't like how deep this inset was. So I'm just going to press L here and then I can go over to my options here and extrude along normals and make that a little bit wider. Easy, done. Now the last one that I'm going to cover for these selection tricks does involve a paid for add-on. So this is going to use Mesh Machine. It's a product made by the same people that make machine tools, but machine tools is the free one, the one with the pie menu and a lot of other things. Mesh Machine gives you a lot of other tricks normally that works around doing things with bevels and booleans and things like that. It's a really good tool as well. It is quite expensive, but if you do hard surface modeling a lot, it's great, but that has a selection trick to it as well, or a function that it has. So I'm just just going to quickly mention that as well so let's shift a and bring in a quad sphere uh, to be fair five is probably more than i need to demonstrate this so i'm going to bring that down to four let's move that over here and just scale that up a bit and i'm going to grab this cylinder and let's do that so i'm going to bring that over here and let's do i don't know rotate that g to there and i'm just going to boolean them together so there plus there i've got ball tools on control and plus I'm going to apply that and I'm going to hide the one that's there. Now, I'm not too worried about these shading issues here, but if I do go into this, normally our alt select to get an edge loop is something that works fine. But you'll notice here it stops working, gets confused. All of these engons here aren't really loops, so it has a problem. But if we just go into edge mode and select a single edge, and I then click Y, which is the Mesh Machine shortcut. If I go down to Select, it has something called L Select. And you'll notice that this add-on's very good at working out Booleans because it's now selected all of it. Uh, so we've now got all of those points selected with L Select. Whereas before, if I just came in here and was selecting or trying to select an edge with Alt Select and it doesn't work, we can do that. Now I will say this, there is actually even better shortcut for that. Instead of doing this, Y, select, L select, there is a shorter way of doing this. I'm just gonna select off. You'll notice if I press Alt straight away on this edge, it doesn't work. But if you do this, so click on a single edge, come off, then Alt click again, it's worked. And you'll see here, it's done the machine tools loop select here. So that's a way of doing it without going into the menu. So again, a bit of a time saver. So there we go, a load of selection tips and tricks for Blender that hopefully is gonna save you a world of time.